In the previous video, we saw that there are some benefits associated with debt financing, and that remains true, but only to a point. We saw that by adding debt, we might add TCD, or the tax rate times the amount of debt issued, in value to the issuing company. And that is true for companies as they start adding debt. But at some point, the debt begins to pile up, and the interest payments may be too much to make all of the time, potentially initiating the bankruptcy process. But it's worse than just that. If you want to learn more about five dangers associated with debt financing, just stick around. When companies have so much debt that it begins to negatively impact them, we say that they're in financial distress. To me, financial distress really starts to be evident when one of the potential outcomes is bankruptcy. Don't get me wrong, even financially stable companies can go bankrupt, but the chances are very low for most companies most of the time. But when the probability of bankruptcy becomes material, say 10% or greater, then the company is likely to begin a potential death spiral that can be hard to survive. First off, when one of the likely outcomes is bankruptcy, firm managers start to make riskier decisions and shift the firm risk to more aggressive projects. It's just like in sports. When your team is losing late in the game, their behavior changes. In hockey, the losing team pulls the goalie and inserts an extra attacker. In soccer, the goalie goes on the offensive. In football, teams try to throw a Hail Mary. In basketball, teams start to foul to extend the clock or take more three-pointers than normal to try to catch up. In nearly every sport, we see coaches make decisions differently when they are facing an imminent loss. Why? Because it normally doesn't matter whether a team loses 1-0 to zero or 100-0. to zero. What matters is the win and the loss. Taking a chance, even if it's a very small one, of scoring that game-tying goal as the clock is expiring means possibly turning that loss into a tie, or maybe even a win if we can get to overtime, or extra time depending on your sport of choice. What does that mean for managers? If it looks like the firm is headed for bankruptcy, the business equivalent of a loss, or maybe even more like relegation, either way, it's a super bad outcome, then they will take extreme chances in hopes that something will work out. This is called the asset substitution problem, and it's only a problem when the company is at risk of bankruptcy. But if that's the case, managers will substitute risky projects that rationally should not be undertaken for the safer projects that would usually be recommended, in hopes of saving the company. There's a great example of this in action. In 1974, the fledgling company FedEx was facing staggering fuel prices because of the OPEC oil embargo. The company got to the point where CEO and founder Fred Smith didn't think that the company could make it through the summer. They were down to $25,000 of cash in the bank, with hundreds of thousands of dollars owed to suppliers, employees, and lenders, and it seemed like there was no escape. So Fred pulled the goalie, well, at least metaphorically speaking. He took the last $25,000 out of the bank, flew out to Las Vegas, and gambled with the money. From his perspective, what was the worst thing that could happen? If he loses the money gambling, the company still goes bankrupt, right? So who cares? But if he gets lucky enough, maybe he could win enough money to pay off the debt and keep the company alive. Well, supposedly he turned $25,000 into $125,000, which was enough to keep the company afloat for a couple of more months. During those extra months, just like overtime, he was able to attract additional investors who put enough money into the company that it survived the oil crisis and went on to become one of the largest companies in the world. Had he not gone to Vegas, he would have paid out that last $25,000 over the next month and gone into bankruptcy. So in this case, it worked. But would Fred have gone to Vegas if the company wasn't in financial distress? <laughs> of course not. He has a fiduciary responsibility to the shareholders to protect their investment. Gambling with their assets would certainly not be an acceptable activity under normal circumstances. Another problem associated with financial distress is called the debt overhang problem. The debt overhang problem refers to the fact that managers might turn down positive NPV projects simply because the value being created by the project will just go to the debt holders in liquidation. In other very oversimplified words, why keep working so hard just so that the lenders get more money back if we're going bankrupt anyways, and the equity holders still don't get any of the benefit? The debt overhangs the investment decision in a way that it doesn't normally do, causing managers, again, to change their behavior in the face of financial distress. A third problem associated with excessive debt is called credit rationing. This happens when the company who already has too much debt finds it difficult to raise additional debt to invest in the business. Who would lend more money to a company that was already in trouble? Well, 
There is such a thing as DIP or debtor in possession financing, and that's one way that companies can raise debt while going through Chapter 11 bankruptcy. But other than that, most lenders would not lend to a company that was already in a lot of trouble. Finally, having too much debt can also impact the other stakeholders in the firm. Customers might start to worry if the company will still be around to service their products, and that may cause the customers to move to a competitor, simply because they know the warranty will still be worth something with the competition. This particular scenario only happens with firms who have long-term relationships with their customers, such as automotive manufacturers, builders, construction companies, maybe high-end electronics manufacturers, and the like. Obviously, nobody thinks about the financial health of Del Monte when you're out there buying bananas. But if you were debating between two different models of car, knowing one of the two companies was likely to go bankrupt and not be around to make spare parts or to service your car or honor the warranty might be enough to push you over the edge to the financially healthier company. Along those same lines, talented employees who have other offers might see your company's financial weakness as a reason to leave. That might be because they are worried about losing their job if the company goes bankrupt, or it might be because the company might respond to the financial distress by cutting benefits, travel, and other employee perks. Either way, financial distress can affect current or future potential employees' decisions of where they want to work, and it might mean that you start to lose talented people or you find it hard to recruit the managers in the future simply because they have financially safer alternatives. All things considered, avoiding financial distress is a very important objective for the CFO. As such, it's really hard to balance the additional value created by the tax shield that comes with having debt and these other perverse behaviors that may impact the company as a result of having too much debt. So when issuing debt, you have to ask yourself, how much should I issue? And that might be the hardest question to answer in all of finance.